Uh, she is a 74th Treasury Secretary. I was flabbergasted, uh, Mr. Secretary, two years, six months, ten days. I would have thought you were Treasury Secretary for eight years. That's what it felt like. Yeah. Did it go? Did it just fly by to be there only two years, six months, well, ten days? Uh, Tom, it uh, you know it, it went quickly. I but I hit the ground running. So the I, I had fortunately a year before the crisis to build relationships of trust with the president, and that, that relationship was. Clearly critical to. to Can you make clear that President Bush was engaged through this crisis? The rap on him is he was not. Oh, th th this man was totally uh, engaged. He was a great boss. He was accessible all the time. Could get him early. Could get him late. What he did was during the crisis, he recognized we needed a different set of procedures. He said I was his wartime general. I briefed him regularly, and we, we had a very good working relationship. If you were the wartime general, what was uh, Mr. Geithner? How did he fit into this mix? Well, well, I would say I worked directly for the president. Geithner was a, t Tim was a close partner. Uh, the relationships that Ben Bernanke, Tim Geithner, and I had were extraordinary. Mm -hmm. They were true partners. The level of cooperation, mutual trust made the, the working relationship, right. relationship very unusual. Let's go to Lehman. I saw Dick Fold, I'm guessing, 10 days before the bankruptcy. I did not recognize him. I'd known him for years, and I, I literally didn't recognize him from his exhaustion. You would have to be a CEO to really understand what he was going through. You more than anyone have that perspective as a former CEO at Goldman. What was Dick Fold going through? Oh, it, it was it had to be agony. Every let me say this: every CEO on Wall Street was tested. This was a hundred-year storm. They were dealing with problems that they hadn't seen in their lifetime, and that, that these were totally new. And uh, mm -hmm. many of them working to uh, to, to keep their com company solvent. And so to to be there. And go down with your ship is just very, very sad. And he went down with the ship. Your speech at the Economic Club of New York the other day, you did highlight this. Speaker Pelosi, it was something necessary for her constituents and everyone else, you dealing with politicians. Uh, the public saw this as a bailout for Wall Street rather than a rescue of our economy. My looking at the movie, my reading of the Bloomberg Businessweek article, this is number one for Hank Paulson, is you didn't get this to Main Street, did you? No, I was unable to Why? make that say. It was a very difficult thing to do. Um, communication publicly to that broad audience. I thought it, it, it should be obvious, which it wasn't, that as a Treasury Secretary of America, everything I was doing was to save the American people. I knew how bad it would be if the system collapsed. But it was mm -hmm. a communications challenge because I didn't want that's what we feared to come upon us. You know, the more I talked about what it would be. But, okay, I agree, but if it was a communications challenge, it's an ancient American challenge, which is distrust of the East Coast elites. Right. Out of Michigan, you go to Dartmouth, all American football player, and all of a sudden you're an East Coast elite. Right. Even though you did it in Chicago. Why should they trust guys like you? Right. Well, I, I would j just simply say this where I was at my best was working in smaller groups working with colleagues in the mm -hmm. administration, working with Democrats and Republicans on the Hill, building trust based upon credibility, from working together, being nonpartisan. I think for me, as a public speaker going broadly, right. it, it, first of all, for people to understand what we did and agree with it, you had to understand how severe the, the, the crisis was and you had to understand that if the system collapsed, it, it could be the Great Depression all over again. They would lose their jobs. And I think part of the challenge for me was I didn't want to say it quite that bluntly mm -hmm. because we were, we were on the edge. And when I had to, to decide between communicating one way and stability, I always right. opted for stability. What is your best practices then for Wall Street and the elites to convey their message to Main Street? Lloyd Blankfein has been far more visible, I would suggest, than many other CEOs. Is that the message, or is there another way to do this? Well, I think the job right today 
anywhere in the world, and particularly in the United States, running any big global company mm -hmm. is much more difficult than it's ever been. There are many demands on a CEO, and one of the demands is speaking to the public and helping the public understand you and your company and your business mm -hmm. and its value to society. And banks are a huge part of our of our economy and you know our our financial system our banking system is the strongest in the world it's the most transparent it's you can raise money for Verizon we showed we can do that today. it's the most efficient it's a core strength it's got some problems but it's an honorable well, profession. Let's talk about the movie and then let's move forward Mr. Secretary so we don't play this movie all over again that's where your voice cracked in the trailer Right. That's the heart of this, isn't it? Yes. You don't want to do this again. Right. Are you confident we cannot do this again? Here's what I say. That's the question I get asked the most. Sure. And we will certainly have other financial crises. As long as we have financial markets and bouts of panic, there'll be crises. Most of them are manageable. And so what we need to do is avoid these massive disruptions like the Great Depression or like the 2008 crisis that right. could easily have been the Great Depression. And to, do, to avoid that, I would say the following. First of all, the system today is much safer than it was. Uh, we've made a lot of progress, right. but we got more work to do. We need to finish cleaning up our messes, and we need to fix a number of flawed government policies, beginning with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Okay, well, let's get a little wonky here and talk about the issue of capital and leverage. The simplistic answer from so many conservatives is just put more capital on the books. Why is this so hard? Why does Jamie Dimon and other banking elites, why do they fight the simplistic idea of just put more capital on the books? So the question is how much? I am a big believer that that's the best defense against failure. So you're turning Swiss uh, on us. Uh, so capital. So we want mm. capital and liquidity. And what I would say here, the banks are already much better capitalized. Yes, than they totally agree. But is it enough, or do they need to be and, more and, like and UBS and Credit Suisse? Well, 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 second of all, second of all, we have the new regs by the, you know, put out by the Federal Reserve and other regulators, mm -hmm. which call for capital surcharge for the biggest uh, financial institutions. I think yeah. that's a really good first step. And on top of that, regulators now have the tools so that they can manage the failure of any large institution better. 